The most exciting thing about the Next Generation Molecular Workbench is that it lets us do more things for more people more easily. The idea is to take our past success with our Molecular Workbench project to create really in-depth, innovative simulations in physics and chemistry and biology and bring them to the web to make them more accessible to people. The technology has moved on since the original the desktop molecular workbench. Everybody's got a browser on their computer. That's an environment that we can build in now. What's behind the scenes is there's the, the engine that's uh, really modeling the real science. You know, we're not just pretending to, to make the science go, we're writing the real laws of physics into that code. The power of molecular workbench, it brings molecular dynamics right to your browser, it lets you do experiments, it lets you um, take and share those experiments in new ways. We want people to be able to build new things from our components. That's really the philosophy we're looking at here. We understand that it's one thing to create a simulation, but really people want to be able to wrap that in a lesson to help people understand the concept. It lets them fit each of the models into their own curriculum, into what they're teaching in their classroom. It lets them provide different amounts of background information depending on uh, what level their students are at. They can also reuse activities that other people have built. It does provide that opportunity for the students to respond to the model, to ask questions and say, what are you seeing here? And make sure that the students are picking up on uh, the points that we're trying to illustrate. There is the potential for teachers and other folks to take our simulations and create their own digital textbooks that come alive for the students. They can have text, they can have images, they can have video, and then they can have these simulations that really let them get inside the scientific phenomena. One of the advantages of having our materials run in the web browser is that it makes it very easy to share what you're looking at. You want to be able to put that in your blog or put it on Facebook or even an email article. You embed this interactive. The code that we're creating is all free and open source. We really want to encourage other developers to get engaged. We don't want users just to be looking at the simulations and seeing what happens. We want them to be interacting with them and exploring with them. I think it will be very important for students to be able to set up their own experiments and to really have as much freedom to explore whatever kind of questions they have. the Molecular Workbench is going to work on a variety of devices. It can be used in classrooms with desktops or laptops or tablets so that it's as available to as many students as possible. So I feel that we're exploring new ground and really creating new things. Things that really unlock the power of discovery with Molecular Workbench in new ways. Now we can share it with the whole world.